everyone. It looks like it is time to start. Thank you all for coming and thanks for everyone tuning in online. Um, so I will introduce our speaker for us today. Mayor Joy Petro has lived in Layton most of her life. She currently lives with her daughter in the Gentile Street Historical Home she restored, receiving the State of Utah Excellence and Preservation Award. From 2005 to 2013, she served as chairman of the board for the Heritage Museum of Layton. Joy was raised in Layton by her parents, Sam and Don Petro. She attended Layton schools and graduated from Layton High in 1979. Joy attended college at Weber State University. She served as the area coordinator for Layton City's Emergency Preparedness Program and is CERT certified. She collects antiques, cars, and restores homes. She is active in several different sports and is a diehard yard sale and auction enthusiast. Joy has been involved with many organizations and events, including the 2002 Olympics, the Intermountain Board of Trustees, Open Doors, and Layton Rotary. Joy worked for Smiths for 16 years and was the advertising director for the Southwest region and a sales executive for 17 years for Quad. Joy is very passionate about the city and believes that it is important to preserve Layton's rich history and diverse heritage, its farming roots, while balancing the future needs of the community. All right, everyone, let's give Joy a warm welcome. Well, Annie makes that sound good, but it, better than what I am. <laughs> um, I, I just want to say thank you for being here. This is uh, certainly a, has been just, I, I believe, such a good educational process for us to go through. And I really want to thank Mr. Bill Sanders because I know that uh, he started this a few years back. And thank goodness with uh, the good board that he has that was able, uh, that has been able to capture a lot of this history, we've been able to put on these lectures. And um, to me, it's exactly what, what my bio said. I really want to preserve our history. I think it's valuable. I think it's something that we can all learn from the past and be able to guide us towards the future. And um, with that, I consider myself um, pitch hitting for our, one of our famous uh, baseball players that we've learned about, which is old Spence Adams. Today, this lecture series is going to be kind of what I call the cleanup. So that's why I'm saying I'm going to, you know, be the cleanup batter for in, in this case. <laughs> uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just recap, give you the small highlights of the past lecture series that we've had. And in doing so, I'm gonna start out, I gotta move this down because it's right in my eye level. I'm gonna start out with um, this famous map that I know all of you guys have seen. And the interesting thing about this map is because it really depicts how Layton was not like the rest of the state, AKA our city blocks was not laid out like the traditional Mormon pattern with the square city blocks. So as you see on this map here, I'm gonna to try to come over here. This area over here is Kaysville. Kaysville was laid out in the square city blocks, which at that time in the early uh, uh, 1800s or the mid 1800s, Layton and Kaysville was all one big area. And um, what really kind of separated Layton from the Kaysville area is because this area up here became very well known for being able to sustain life. I mean, we had a lot of farmers and ranchers and the reason why Layton developed is because if you look at this map again, you see some major streams. This one here is the Case Creek and this stream here is the North Fork of Holmes and then you've got the South Fork of Holmes. So along those streams is where life began. And um, like I said, we were, uh, the whole area at that time was known as, as the Kays Ward. And um, in 1886, uh, Kaysville was incorporated, but Layton, again, was part of that whole area. So it's, it, we basically are called the Kays Ward in the early days. Um, as I mentioned here, this kind of, these slides here kind of depict what life was like or what this area was known as. Um, if you look up on the Sand Hill Range up where Hillfield is today, that was extremely good grazing ground. 
that's where a lot of the uh, farmers, or excuse me, the cattle ranchers and um, the folks who, who had sheep. And I was uh, asking uh, our former um, mayor here, Mr. Jim Layton, <laughs> if he remembered some of the names of the, of the families that, uh, that pretty much started this area. And uh, we all, of course, know of the Ellisons, which, and the Morgans, I mean, they were pretty famous in this area, but also I want to uh, acknowledge the Jakes was uh, another family in this area that really kind of started in that area. And it's, of course, this is going on now in, with tradition, but um, so it, you, you can see where Layton has, has always been very valuable to this, to sustaining life. But the neat thing about our history at that point is we just didn't provide for ourselves in this area. If you notice the picture down here with the horses, what was interesting is Leighton actually became very well known as the place where you want to come and buy horses. And in fact, the federal government used to come through here annually and um, they would buy the draft horses and the saddle horses for, for the army. So um, I thought that was a, a nice, good, historical moment that, you know, we need to, we need to let folks know about. Um, so like I said, in the early 1900s, we were mainly known for uh, our vegetables. And of course, we've got our famous sugar beet there in the, in there, which um, we'll be talking about that a little bit later, because as you know, uh, by the presentation that was given by Mr. Uh, Ted Ellison, we, we learned a lot about the, the sugar factory there and how, what a major employer it was in this area because um, not only did the folks farm and ranch, they would come in and that was a, a good sustaining job for them during that time to help with the various campaigns. Um, then, so in the early 1800s, uh, Layton started to kind of form their own business district. Now, keep in mind, we were still part of Kaysville at the time or the whole Kays Ward, but we, um, started with a couple of our own little businesses on what is basically, it used to be Main Street. There was one major road that went from Salt Lake to Ogden. And along that Main Street area, which in our case uh, was a very wide <laughs> dirt road. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we started uh, forming some of our own businesses. So you have what is uh, the Farmers Union Co-op, which is this picture down here. Today, it is currently what was First National Bank, but is now First Community Bank. Um, across the street on the east side of Main Street, you have the Adams and Son business here. And that was one of the first ones, uh, first businesses that we had. And uh, that was more or less just like a market. And I recall if any of you uh, purchased any of the books that were put together for our Centennial program, there's a, a fun story in there about Bernie the Butcher. Um, and uh, I'll just give you a quick synopsis of it. I mean, basically Adams, um, they, they recognized that uh, we needed to supply our own, uh, they grew all the cattle up here, but yet the, you know, it was always, as far as the butchering, it was always done, or the market, let's say, was always done down south or up north. So. Uh, they hired, uh, they brought in Bernie out of, I think it was Germany. He was, he was actually working in Salt Lake. He immigrated here from Germany, but they knew what a good butchery was and they went down and was able to um, bring him up to Leighton and offer him a job. And in fact, they actually provided a home for him and he became part, part of their family and was very well accepted in the area. But uh, fun story. So you need to read some of those stories that are also in that book as well. Um, as we, let's see. So as I mentioned, we've got the, the oh, and of course, Leighton Drug. Uh, this is actually a very cool picture because I mean, it's the old wooden building. And as we know, Leighton Drug was around until we shut down Fort Lane Shopping Center because they moved off of Main Street and ended up over in Fort Lane. But, um, you know, that again, that was the necessities you needed in the area and it, and it made it to where you didn't have to travel. However, Leighton, being a farming and, and cattle community, there was no upfront parking. I mean, you still hitched your horses and you went to town. I mean, there, there was very little people, there was very few homes that were right in the core part of our, our city at that time. So you either came from the West or 
out or from the west or up east. And in fact, I know to this day, there are folks in West Layton. In fact, Mr. Ron Layton, who's here in the audience, always says that he's going to go uptown. And <laughs> even though it's only two miles up the street to them, that was uptown because that was just, you traveled east to go up to, to do your shopping. Um, so again, this was just the first few buildings here that started. But this map is very uh, fun to look at, and it really kind of depicts what what our city kind of laid, how we started it right there in that uh, core little area. Um, we've got what's called the triangle piece, which is basically you've got um, Main Street here. This is Gentile going east and west, and then you've got Cross Street. And to this day, we still refer to that area as the triangle. And the fun thing about this map is you look at it, any of the red buildings are actually the buildings that were made of brick. And a few of those buildings are still in existence today, thank goodness. Any The ones that are in yellow, that was a framed structure. And I do know we do, we have, I believe, uh, well, it used to be the, the uh, bicycle shop, but now it's a uh, kind of a antique shop. Is a, it's actually, it's easier for me to point to it. It's, it's still in existence today. It's this building right here. And uh, again, you know, like I said, that's one of our framed buildings. And then any of the gray uh, buildings that you see there or structures, that was made of adobe. And adobe brick was kind of a big thing then. Uh, in fact, a lot of the, the brick structures during that time was made of an adobe brick that I believe was made up on the hillside here. And um, in and I know this because my home's built this way, but basically you had they built their walls with the brick themselves. So I actually, my, my, in my home, my walls are three brick wide. The interior walls have got three layers of, of adobe brick. The exterior has that same three layers plus a nice fired red brick on the outside. So you can see why these uh, buildings are very strong and sturdy still today, uh, even though they probably don't meet all of our business, or I mean our, our, our code as far as, um, you know, electrical and, uh, all the, all, well, I, I won't go there. Anyway, as long as they, you know, some of them, I, mean, I know it takes a lot to kind of bring these buildings up to code. Um, but at, anyway, so that's kind of like the early beginning there of our business area. And in fact, I believe, uh, no, we've just got that first frame over there. It shows a lot of the, the early beginnings there. And um, I'm going to get to that first slide here or that first billboard there in a minute because that's actually a very important one. But just before that, uh, I had mentioned as far as the sugar mill. So between 1890 and 1915, uh, Layton really witnessed the establishment of three major industries here. You have the Layton rolling mill up here in this slide here. And uh, then you had the Woods Cross, Cross Cannery, and then of course the, the sugar factory. And the white, the, the, as far as the rolling mill, they, the main brand there that they were known for was the white swan flour. And that flour was sold throughout all the Western United States. So here we are right here in little Layton, Utah, and we were supplying flour all over the Western United States. Uh, in 1903, the Woods Cross Cannery opened up. And again, that was on Cross Street. So remember when I talked about the triangle, the cannery was located there on Cross Street. And of course, as I mentioned, you know, with all of the fruits and vegetable or fruits and vegetables and farming that we, we did in this area, um, they did a lot of canning out of there. And um, again, we were a major supplier in the Western states for our for our, the canned goods coming out of uh, Layton, Utah here. Then in 1915 is when our sugar factory uh, was founded. This factory by the mid 20s actually was the major, was 
like I mentioned earlier, they 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 were the main the one and only the main league. God, I can't talk here. Our main employer at that time, and um, they there was a lot of folks that came from a lot all the surrounding areas to come and work those campaigns. And again, as you can see in the slide there, uh, the main brand that uh, was known that came out of that sugar factory was the Mountain brand. And the neat thing about that sugar factory is it actually stayed in bis business for over 50 years. So we were producing that Mountain brand sugar for many, many years. So now to the fun part, a century of progress. <laughs> As I mentioned, that first billboard over there, that really kind of depicts the beginning of Layton. Because in 1920 is when we were incorporated. And as you folks know, we've uh, just gone through that, uh, our 100 year centennial celebration. But if you look at the map, that the red outline of this map kind of really shows what our boundaries were at that time. And as I studied it, it looked like um, basically anybody living east of Fairfield or west of the, uh, the DRG railroad tracks was still in the unincorporated parts of Davis County. So we were condensed, but we were a city and we were incorporated at that time. And uh, this map here, I thought was pretty interesting. I mean, it, it, it's a good overlay, but this map is actually from the 1950s and it was taken from um, the insurance company. Which one was it? Oh, heavens. Uh, I, I don't recall, but anyway, this, so basically this map is overlaid over a 1950 map at the time as far as what our city looked like. But you can see how, um, the population was very sparse and very little homes. The dots obviously are, are where the homes are. Um, this again, that was in the 1950s, but the, you know, our population was still very, very sparse at that time. But being that we had incorporated, we needed our town board. So as you see here, Lawrence E. Ellison, he was the town board president. We have, um, George Briggs, which is over here on this far side, and then working my way over. You have E.G. King, William Layton, who is, I know Ron's descendant there, and uh, Leonard Sandal, who were all, uh, oh, and excuse me, and, uh, Miss, excuse me, I'm sorry. So these, these gentlemen here was basically made up the town board trustees. Then you had... Um, Edward Whiteside, who was the Justice of the Peace. Wilford Wigley, Wiggle, excuse me, was the town clerk with Bird Cook as the treasurer. And then Ray Bybee was the town marshal. And uh, we did not have a picture there of him, but that was your beginning of what now today we have as a mayor and council form of government. But that was the beginning of your board of trustees and the way Layton started. Um, so this picture here is, uh, is uh, you know, is very eye-opening, I think, because it really shows what Leighton was like at that time. This uh, famous LeConte Stewart picture here um, on this side here shows what Leighton looks like looking eastward from Main Street. So if you looked East on Gentile Street, that's basically what it looked like. It was still a dirt road. <laughs> there wasn't any, any type of homes or anything going on. But then several years later in about 1939, we have a, an oil painting here by Royal Owens who actually captured that same view more or less, slightly at an angle, but it shows that by then we have the White Chapel. And to this day, I know all of us refer to the building down at the end of uh, Wasatch Street that sits right on the corner of Wasatch and Gentile as the, the old White Chapel. I mean, that's kind of folks that grew up around here. That's kind of our landmark. But it was kind of interesting because I'd made reference to that just like four days ago. And they looked at me like, 
what are you talking about? Where? And so I had to kind of describe some of the businesses that are located in there, like felt uh, dentistry and then the dance studio. So, um, but th those of us that grew up around here, certainly, you know, that was a landmark and, and just a way of kind of knowing that you were uptown, right? <laughs> um, let's see. So now, as we look here, we've got um, what is known today as Highway 89. However, back in those days, it wasn't a highway and you, ref you had different names for street, obviously. So this was called the Mountain Road. And I know the whole time I grew up, and in fact, when I was in high school, we still referred to it as the Mountain Road, even though it had been blacktop and it was a regular a thoroughfare. But um, again, this kind of shows what Leighton looked like because this particular angle of where this picture is taken is just south of where 193 and 89 is. So I'm gonna say approximately east of where Valley View Drive comes out, the north end of Valley View Drive comes out and hits 89. So right in that area is what the road looked like at this time. So the, again, this was in about 1930. So you can see how, how the uh, progress we've made in the, uh, over the years. Okay, now we're gonna move into the, uh, about the 1930s roughly. And this, the 1930s was an interesting time. It was a very, it was very difficult to get any type of culinary water to any of the folks that was east of the town board, uh, the town boundaries. And um, so at that time, a new city kind of cropped up or a new area, which was called Laytona. And the reason why they kind of um, formed themselves is because they could actually apply for a federal grant and be able to get money to be able to build that infrastructure so that they could, they could then have water east of going, eastward up here in Layton. So, um, you know, it was very uh, clever of them and very smart. I'm glad they did it because certainly, uh, <laughs> To, do, to this day, we still use that same infrastructure. Uh, but so East Layton was then incorporated and that was about, so I was talking about the 1930s, but really it was 1939. And um, I know that they did form a, they, they have their town hall and that town hall building is still in existence today. It's actually, we have a park uh, up there on East Layton. It's right on Emerald Drive. And the building that sits up there on the east of Emerald Drive, if you were going up Gordon and then make a quick uh, left there, that building is in existence today. And again, like I said, that was their, their city hall at the time. So then as we move along, um, on September 27th of 1940, the very first city, Layton City Hall was actually dedicated even though we had been in, <laughs> had been incorporated, we really didn't have a dedicated city hall. And so in this picture, you can see the, the building. Um, it contained, basically it was just one big large meeting room with an office and a restroom. And then to the side of it was the fire station. And this building is on Gentile Street and, and it's actually still in existence today as well. Right now it's got, um, well, there was a pet place in there and a glass studio, but um, it's, it's obviously changed a little bit, but um, we do have the, like I said, that building is still there and it was kind of fun to see that um, that was really when we first had our city hall. So as we move along, we're now into about the 1950s. And in 1950, in 1958, the city hall that was over on Gentile Street that I just described actually was moved over into this area, which was basically the old Verlin, Verlin Park area. And again, we learned a lot about Verlin Park from uh, Mr. Sam Trujillo, who happened to be a former council member as well. And um, so again, we so now we have a, a new administration building over here 
And that administration building, which is this top picture up here, is what they used from 1958 until 1970, roughly. Then in um, 1970, gosh, hang on, lose my spot here. The facility was actually expanded and the departments and office space was needed. So it started out as one small area, but then they expanded it. But luckily, as the city grew, they recognized we need additional space and um, they ended up knocking down that building and erecting this new building right here, which is where we sit today. And that actually took place in 1990. So the old city complex, this hall, and I do recall as a kid going in there many times, um, that was kind of like the center gathering place at that time. I mean, we didn't really have a central hall, but any of the civic activities that took place, you just went there. I remember going there to sign up for mm. some of the Little League, well, not Little League, but uh, some of the sports that they had at the time, as well as um, a shout out to Ruby Price because she was uh, the scout master at that time. And, and we used to meet in that building uh, for, for our scout, for Girl Scouts. And of course, I was a brownie at that time, but I remember going in there and it was kind of an old wooden floor building that, you know, you heard everybody walking around or moving around in that place, that's for sure. Um, let me move on a little bit. So I need to back up here and talk about probably the biggest historical date that I think all of us always should have in our mind, and that's December 7th of 1941. That changed not only America, but it changed late in Utah. On this date, um, it really became the death of what Leighton was known as the agricultural area. But it became the birth of the defense area, of the defense depot or Hill Air Force Base. So it was a major changing point in our community because as we know, Hill Air Force Base became the largest employer, not only in Layton, but in Davis County and throughout the state. And like I said, it was also kind of the beginning of, I think when Layton really started to grow because you've got um, obviously the, the base that it, that was growing at that time, needed several people there, but um, we became a really urbanized city very quickly because the government came in and realized we need over 14, was it 1,450 um, folks to, to be employed up on that base, but where are we gonna house him? Where are they gonna live? Although you had a, a pretty good community here, there were still a lot of people that they needed to bring in. And, um, so shortly after that, that's when basically Berlin Park started because the government came in, they started looking around. They, they weren't just looking in Layton, they were looking all over Davis County as far as where would be a good area to, to build these government housings. So as they went up Gentile Street, again, they saw, you know, at that time we had our White Chapel, but that area all to the east and to the north was a big vacant field. So. Like I said, here's our chapel, but look at what late, this area looked like at that time. That was in 1942, 43. And they realized this is the spot where we need to build our um, temporary housing. And it was <laughs> temporary housing or supposed to be temporary housing because the buildings uh, were made out of plywood they were prefab buildings that were built in California and then shipped here and put together. And uh, they formed what was called Verlin Park. And Verlin Park was, a, was really became a fun and inviting and extremely tight neighborhood, a tight community. Because you did not, it was the first time in, our, in Layton's uh, existence that basically you could walk to the grocery store, you could walk to the, um, 
library. You could walk to the, what they, they had a community hall at the time. You could walk to your neighbors and the kids could play because before, keep in mind, you know, you were very agricultural and you'd have to go quite a ways up the street to, to your nearest neighbor. So anyway, this, be, this really um, kind of identified the neighborhood beginning or what the neighborhoods would are like and how Leighton really kind of started to burst at the seams. As I look back, um, I'm thinking to myself, I thought, you know, that was the beginning of a, of a problem that we currently have today. <laughs> As you know, we're, we're going through the same growth problems all along the Wasatch Front. We don't have enough housing. We, we've, got, we've got to be able to provide for, for our, our folks. And um, I can honestly say this is, this is uh, I, I believe, an issue that it was in history, it's today, and it's going to continue. I think you're always going to have an issue or um, a challenge. I shouldn't say an issue, just a challenge in providing housing uh, for for your citizens. So a little bit about the Verlin Park. I'll go into it a little bit more depth, even though I know we learned a lot um, from Mr. Trujillo. So these homes, like I said, they were prefabbed. You had either a one, two, or a three bedroom home. And the only way you could live in that complex is if a member worked up at Hillfield. But to give you an idea of what rent was like at that time, um, for a one bedroom, your unit would cost you $21.50 a month. A two bedroom was $24.50. And a three bedroom was $31.50. Each one of those units had a cement bathtub, <laughs> which I imagine kept the water pretty, pretty chilly, <laughs> um, as well as a small space heater and um, a living room, but what's kind of fun is for those of you, if you haven't been to our museum, which is on the campus here of our Leighton City Hall, they've, they've got a great display that shows a cute little washer and dry, or a washer machine and just kind of some pictures of what the what the housing unit looked like. So it's it's amazing how, you know, today we feel like we have to have such great big units in order to or homes and everything, and yet these these folks were had three, five children. I think we learned the Trujillos had was it five siblings living in that place. So I mean, um, very small quarters, but yet very a happy time of life as well. Okay, this picture kind of shows what I just spoke about. I'm sorry, I'm a little behind on my slides here, but um, it shows the barrack style housing. And um, the way that the court was laid out is, luckily, Wasatch Drive that we have today and still use, that was the main thoroughfare through Verlin Park. But then it had uh, streets that shot off either to the east or to the west. And the sequencing in that area was all done by the alphabets. So you either lived on A court or B court. And um, so when you played with your friends or whatever at that time, you'd say, oh, I'm over on F court. So you kind of, it was kind of easy to kind of know where your friends lived or, or if somebody came to find you, you could easily say where, where you were at. Um, so as I mentioned, so Berlin Park was, you know, had, was kind of, because they were so concentrated in this area, it actually kind of, allowed us to kind of grow still. And um, these photos here shows what life was like that I just described, but this lower left-hand corner here, when I was looking at that picture, I kind of thought, oh, here we thought the Davis, we, you know, I mean, Leighton is always known as, uh, we've had our, our amphitheater here and it's always had entertainment, but this really shows that this exact ground, this exact area, was where entertainment really took place because you know this is one one of their uh, a photo from during that time of them having their own entertainment in that same little area. So if you go farther south, knowing that we were so concentrated here in in uh, the Commons Park area, now that I'm calling it, you still had your basic services. I mean, we had Main Street where they could go, but this was 
the beginning of really our business district and, and really kind of people branching out and bringing the business di district east of Main Street. And one of the first, you had two major uh, businesses that opened up at that time. You had uh, Wayne Weiniger's supermarket, which that was on the south side of Gentile. Basically, if you're at the light right now, if you went down Wasatch Drive and stopped at the light where um, Gentile and Wasatch Drive meets, it would be just kitty corner, um, kind of where the bank is now. So you had uh, Weiniger Supermarket, and then just south and a little west of there, um, we Jay Willie opened up the first, satis it was called the Satisfaction Center, and that's where you could find the home goods. So your furniture and appliances and that to, to, um, to put in your home. So it was, you had, to, like I said, the beginning of, what, of how our, um, our business district was starting to change. So after, um, after World War II ended, the Leighton residents, uh, like the rest of the world, <laughs> had a love affair with the automobile. And um, we started getting our uh, automobile industry going here in Leighton. In the 1940s and early 50s, we had several gas stations and um, repair shops. And of course, the car dealerships that cropped up all over town. And um, probably the one that I think all of us know, and quite honestly, is still in existence today, even though they've changed, oops, changed their name, is uh, Olson Chevrolet here. It's part of the Young Automotive Group now today, but that's part of that same family. And then um, this, pay, this photo here in the middle, I get a kick out of that because uh, Pete Page, I, he, all of us know Pete and Wayne Burningham, that was their dealership there. And, um, you know, they cropped up on Main Street there. And then, of course, the Sinclair station was across the street. It was on the east side of Layton. And I believe, and this is where um, I was asking a question earlier, just when you look at this Sinclair station, just to the south of there, it shows an open field now. And I do recall that's where Ike's property was. And we need to dig into history here and find this, but I know for I know that there was the county jail. It was an old, just it was all cement building there, and that was the county jail, I believe, at that time. So back when we established this, when we had our city marshal, I'm sure that's where he, he took folks in the early days. So, and then of course, you know, Bishop's Auto was there as well. So this, this photo here, again, you know, just like we ha saw the rendering earlier as far as uh, East on Gentile, um, Royal Owens also painted Main Street. So this is what our Main Street looked like in 1960. Um, you can see, again, this, this over here is the, the beginning of the triangle piece. This is what was the Farmers Union Co-op here. And then this area here, you had, in the early days, you had your Adams uh, market there. This is the old Cali Drugs, which was a pretty um, famous spot for many years. It had the, the drug, a nice soda fountain inside there. And then, of course, this is this street here. You'd go east, going up Main Street. And this set of buildings is still here today, all of those. That's part of that brick adobe building. Uh, this is a flower shop. And... I just want to paint, point out one thing that I, I hope that we can accomplish here soon is kind of preserving our history is on the top of this building. I'm sure the folks here in the audience probably know of this, but myself, I, I you know, like I said, I want to preserve our history, but there's an original old Coca-Cola um, advertisement painted on that on the side of that building. Now, unfortunately, some kids got up there and tagged it, and it's kind of got a big spot over it, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, preserve that and have it recreated here soon. Um, because again, I, to me, that just shows what the evolution of, of kind of like our city and also advertising at that time. So again, this is kind of a fun shot, very beautiful painting, um, and of course, a very good year in my book. <laughs> So now as we move along, 
this slide here basically shows, again, just the activity within our city. Um, you had several eateries that cropped up. You have the old Dipper Drive-In. Again, that was on Main Street, just south of where the Olson Chevrolet building is that we showed you in the previous slide. Um, you had a number of drive-ins. Uh, and um, this was kind of the, I guess, when people really started getting on the move and going out because, you know, a lot of times you always just ate at home. But this was really when, when fast food started to come on board. Um, you had the Dairy Queen, which is actually this barn style building was their first original design. And it's still, it's in existence now down on the border of Leighton Kaysville. Um, Okuda's was a famous uh, place where you'd go for a nice steak or, or uh, oriental food. And then of course our famous Seals Cafe. This, this photo here shows the original cafe, which was south on Main Street, just before you get up to the Layton Parkway. That, I know that they've operated in that place for, well, that was the beginning there of their, their cafe. And um, they, they were in there until we had to build the parkway. And luckily, Sales being a great uh, traditional family here in Layton was able to maintain their business. And they're now over on Gentile Street, just uh, east of Burger Stop in what some of us would know as the old Pizza Hut building. <laughs> so again, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm just kind of doing the recap of our of really what Layton, how Layton has grown and changed over the years. So as I mentioned with the Verlin Park, you had the beginning of the business district coming east. You had the J. Willie Satisfaction. You had your um, Weinegger Superstore. But then just to the south and a little east there, we formed our first strip mall, which was known as the Fort Lane Shopping Center. This picture shows some of the businesses that were in the area, which were in the area at that time. I mean, Safeways was the big anchor store. It was on the far east side of that strip mall. Uh, you had King's Department Store here, which that was, uh, you know, that was like our go-to Walmart place at the time. There was, I mean, you could go in that store and find pretty much anything you needed for your household goods or candy or presents for your siblings or for birthdays, whatever. And then um, farther on down that strip mall, here's, here's a fun card, the old ink spot. That was an office supply place. And um, you had Leighton Flower there as well, the flower shop. So again, you know, you could see how Leighton just has, has started to evolve into really a good retail source. I mean, here we'd spun off from Kaysville. We started our business district, but now we're really starting to grow and start to get momentum. And like I said, that probably came really from, from the uh, Hill Air Force Base coming into, into play. Um, Oh, I forgot one other story. You guys will laugh at this. Some of you guys remember the Moto Day in that place? <laughs> that was the first a woman's apparel place where you could go and actually buy just women clothing. And they actually had uh, a department store for men, which I'm trying to remember. I, it's not Squire. the Squire. That's it. Yes, thank you. Because I remember B&B &B over on uh, in the Triangle place, but the Squire was the men's store. So, Okay, so as I mentioned, we're in a century of uh, progress. Uh, the late 1940s and early 50s is when we um, really became urbanized. This shows kind of like the begin some of our sprawl now as far as our neighborhoods because um, again you had this concentrated effort here in this compound for the base folks but then um, you know, the war ended and people loved the area and we started to grow and have more kids and needed more housing. So along came the Ellison housing area, which a lot of those folks that were in the Verland Park area then kind of went out and was um, buying homes in the area and, and uh, we really started to grow. So um, Verland Park was taken down in 1962 and many of those buildings were sold off to private individuals. So a lot of those folks come in and put wheels under them and 
towed them down the road and moved them out into different areas throughout our city. And I know, I know some of the folks here in the audience knows where a few of those buildings are and, and saw and was here at that time when, it, when all that took place. So um, you really started to see a change. And um, from what we were in 1920, our population in 1920, by the way, was only about 700 folks total. And by 1960, we were about 9,000. So you can see the growth that took place. And just as an idea, just so you know, today our population is pushing about 80,000. And um, really a build out, uh, that number's right around 130. It could push to 150, if, depending on the density that we, that continues. But uh, so, you know, Layton went from a little 700 folks in this city when we incorporated to where we're at now. But this really shows the growth, like I just mentioned. Oh, in fact, there's the numbers if you'd like to see. So in 1920, the census was actually five, the census showed it at 529. In the 60, I told you we were around 9,000. Um, in 1980, where we were 22,000. By, two, by the year 22,000, excuse me, we were at 58,000 in our population. And then, like I said, today, uh, well, the census from 2020 was at 77,000, but I know we're pushing 80. Many of you guys will recognize this uh, famous <laughs> symbol here. This is the big old Kmart. Layton, as I mentioned, really kind of became this retail center, or we have. But what really started it is when we started having a lot of these big box stores come into our city. And Kmart was the very first one, and they arrived in 1978. Kmart was on the corner of Antelope and Main Street. And it was, in fact, that building's still there. It is now a storage storage area, an indoor storage facility. But it's, um, it was kind of like the success of Kmart really, I think, helped guide the council at that time as far as, wow, what we could do in this city or how retail could really help with the growth, the infrastructure, and everything that we needed to do to function. So... Um, our retail really started to change. <laughs> in 1980, we had, a, again, that's when the shift took place. We uh, built this Leighton Hills Mall. And the mall had a surround, in the surrounding businesses in that area, again, is what shifted our retail or our retail sector that was down here on Fort Lane Shopping Center more towards what it, to where the mall is today, which we call Midtown now. But you can see that the population grew. We needed more than just that little area and we were able to support um, a, big, a big facility like this. And in fact, um, you know, without that mall, boy, I, I, I dare not say where we'd be at today because, um, you know, we, we heavily rely on those sales tax dollars and that, the decision that that council made at that time to bring that mall in here to me was phenomenal because it really concentrated everything, but yet it get, allowed us to have a destination point for people coming from all around to shop. And we captured, we've, we've held on to that. And I know that uh, recently in the news, uh, Layton Hill Malls has been talked about. And I checked with uh, Linda Kelly, who's the mall manager, and interesting enough, our mall is still at 80% capacity, which is fantastic. So I, I, I highly encourage everybody to shop local, you know, support our businesses as much as we can, and hopefully we can um, keep that mall going. So again, that was like in the 1980s, but we also had additional growth come in then. For the first time, we actually have a hospital. We had... Um, Tanner Clinic decided to expand and Humana Hospital. And um, one of the things that I, I failed to point out here is 
back in the day, Tanner Clinic, this upper right-hand corner up here, that was really the only place you went. And it was right across the street from Layton Elementary. It was a, a small building. It had a basement in it. So, I mean, it was, you know, very utilized, but everybody went there for any of their medical needs. And of course, any major surgeries, you could go north or south, uh, up to Ogden or Salt Lake. But um, so Tanner Clinic is, is uh, again, another valuable part of uh, and fabric of our city because uh, Noel Tanner lived right there on Main Street as well. And it's interesting because Tanner Clinic today is one of our major employers in the city. They not only have the, the new Tanner Clinic that we know that's up over here, that's up by the hospital, and um, they expanded there obviously on that campus, but they've also announced plans to build another facility just across from the additional hospital that we have now just off the parkway. And I know that they have several other clinics throughout the county as well. So I'm, uh, you know, I think this is a, a good success story of, of a local family that has really kind of continued to provide a service in our, in our community. So again, that was in the um, roughly the 1980s. And then um, we continued in the retail sector. By 1990, the, we did have a big box explosion. So the Kmart, the success of Kmart really kind of is when Layton changed and became known as the big box area. We welcomed a lot of these national chains. Walmart was our first one. We, Walmart, actually the first store that was built is actually north of the existing Walmart today that's over on Hillfield Road. They had built a small, um, a smaller footprint Walmart there, but because it was so successful, they turned around and built behind them, built a nice big massive store that we have today and tore down the other one because they needed the parking space because that's how much we had uh, a demand for. But then also you had Shopco and Target and Home Depot and of course Sam's Club and that came in and Kohl's. And I know that uh, this picture here kind of shows those major big box stores that came and they are still, most of them are still there today, thank goodness. So um, these national chains really kind of, again, help sustain our community. It's what keeps us going, but um, after 56 years of no railroad, guess what? Our transportation needs needed to be met. And we have the, um, instead of the old Bamberger Railroad, which I didn't mention much of that, but uh, we did start out with a, a single gauge railroad that commuted people back and forth along the Wasatch Front. But then in, 19, in um, let's see, in 2000, it was 2008 is when the front runner uh, became in service. And um, of course, this is what really is changing and will continue to change our lives today is being able to live and ride and be able to uh, commute on mass transit versus the love of the automobiles that we learned about on, on Main Street there. As far as some of the major uh, employees, non-governmental employees uh, or businesses that have, provide employment for our folks here in our city, you have Smith's who is actually the largest. <laughs> um, you have, again, like I mentioned, the hospital, They've, they, they're one of the major law, um, providers of jobs here in Tanner Clinic. Uh, you've got Tolman Construction and May Trucking and I was thinking, uh, in addition to that, we've got several others that, that really are, are, have provided good jobs in this area. Um, we, I don't have on here, but I've mentioned it before, you've got the Sam's and Walmart. I mean, they've got a ton of people that they, they employ. They, with the new IHC hospital over here, I know they have over 400 uh, jobs there as well. So uh, with all this growth and all this change within our city, you can see that we're able to provide a good living as well as jobs 
to sustain them so that we can all stay here within this within our boundaries. So it's I my I want to say thanks to these businesses for coming in and actually providing employment for us. Um, oh, one other company that I was thinking about too is uh, Geneva Rock. Geneva Rock's a big employer in this area as well, which um, and IMC. So again, uh, Layton's come a long way. We've we've really kind of matured into the city that we are today. So um, this slide here really kind of shows where we're at now. Um, we've grown into a really solid community that uh, has endless opportunities as far as I'm concerned. We've got, uh, you know, social, we're able to provide the social and cultural events. We've got uh, good religious um, amenities and you don't really have to go very far. You can still stay within the city boundaries to enjoy life, whether it be golfing or um, taking a walk or coming down to the museum or just plain relaxing on the, in our green parks. So um, I just want to also point out that um, I think we, we're on the beginning uh, again of some major changes and um, the change in our housing structure, obviously, because like I said, you know, we, it, housing folks has always been a problem or not a problem, a challenge. <laughs> and um, so we're facing that again. And just in my lifetime, I am amazed at the changes that I've seen. I kind of mentioned that uh, 1960 was a, a good year. <laughs> that tells you how old I am now. But so from 1960 to today, all the changes that I have seen and witnessed is just bottle, bottles my mind. So I can't imagine how some of the folks here in the audience might feel. Um, I know going forward, you're witnessing the changes already. You're seeing an overpass on, mount, on the mountain road now that's being constructed. Um, we're gonna end up with another town center up on Gordon in 89, hopefully. That will become a nice good area. And, and all of this is coming about because we have actually gone through a whole general plan process and really kind of identified certain areas within our city on what makes sense to accommodate our folks. So this isn't just a, a small handful of people that are making these decisions. These decisions are made by our entire city. We, like I said, we've gone through the general plan process. We've invited everybody to have their input. And from that, we've come up and I've identified these areas. So I thought it'd be just kind of, you know, fun to kind of recap what's, what's going to take place. Like I said, we'll, we'll have that town center up on uh, Highway 89 in Gordon. We'll have a new fire station up on the east side as well that will be above Highway 89, or I should say the mountain road, right? That's what we've just learned here. <laughs> um, out west, we've got the West Davis Corridor that's coming in. So we're getting our second freeway, basically, that's going to come through our city. Um, Hillfield Road. You know, that was identified as an area that's going to be a major, not a major, but another retail area. That would be on Hillfield Road right around the, between 2200 to 2700 uh, west, that area is going to change. Um, as I mentioned, transportation. We've got the front runner in. We've got our bus, our bus lines that are going, but we're going to have to look at different ways to really kind of move people around, which thank goodness, I think with the change in what's taken place this last year, a lot of us have realized how we can go without with certain things. Our love for our automobile and being able to feel like you have to drive everywhere has changed. You saw a lot of people buy bicycles. So you're going to see a need for a different type of transportation going forward. We we're going to need more trails. We're going to need um, to connect a lot of those trails. We've, we've got a good starting on those now, but we don't have the east-west or the north-south that really connects well. So 
this is what's, how Layton's going to change going forward. We're going to need to get that connection so that we can kind of take care of folks and, and allow them to get around in different modes. Um, Hillfield. I spoke a little bit about Hillfield. Again, they're a major, without Hillfield, uh, a, lot of, a lot of these cities along the Wasatch Front would, 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 would basically cease to exist because they're such a major uh, employer. And we don't have the exact numbers, but I can tell you, they're looking to employ with not only just the base, but with uh, those uh, businesses that are uh, the support to the base, like Northrop Grumman and Keo Mac and those, there's gonna be an additional 4,000 jobs that's been announced that are gonna be fulfilled. So you're gonna see, when we talk about the explosion and the change within your city, within your communities, this is where, this is another area where, like I said, where we're gonna witness it ourselves and see the change. Um, I, I also want to kind of um, just quickly recap a few other things. As I mentioned, Fort Lane Sh Shopping Center. What was interesting there is there was the existing shopping center that I showed in these slides, but look what we've done today. That's a rebirth. Basically, the old one got torn down and you had a rebirth as far as new buildings and, and um, services. So um, I think you might see that a little bit. I was talking to um, former Mayor Jimmy Layton here and I asked him, I says, what was, what was kind of the, the change or what kind of tell me one thing that you recall when you were mayor? And interesting enough, he said, at that time, there was no vacant buildings. You did not see anything that was vacant because again, as I just recapped, you saw this boom go on, right? So today I know we do have vacant buildings, but you're gonna see that change. You're gonna see the rebirth of that that's gonna take place. So um, as I've mentioned before, our history is important to me. I think it's something we need to preserve. I want to and express my sincere thanks and gratitude to the museum board. I'm glad you're in existence. I know you guys do a lot to help preserve that. And, um, you know, I, I shout out, uh, I, like I said, Miss, Mr. Bill Sanders kind of helped put this series together, but we've got a great new curator as well in Annie Bomber. She's got a lot of good forward thinking there, a lot of things that uh, she wants to see um, take place. And I support that. And myself, I also, again, can see the value in capturing our history. And I think uh, Ms. Murdoch has done an excellent job on going back and kind of picking up on little things of our history. But I want to announce today that I want to extend some additional help to the museum. A few years ago, we had what was just the preservation committee. And I think it's time that we kind of perhaps bring that back into existence. We've got our, our board. You guys are, um, like I said, you're, you're the gem, but I really want to kind of add to that and possibly add three more, bring back just a preservation group. So anybody who would be interested in, in applying for, the, for that position, I'm gonna have, I figure I needed to start out with three and see how we can do there, see what type of work they can do to help kind of identify some of these um, historical events and really capture it. I think we have an opportunity going forward to capture the history of our citizens. Um, I've mentioned that <laughs> Our board has such a vast knowledge, but you guys, we need to preserve that. We really need to see, you can see how I'm struggling today on just kind of kind of recapturing, recapturing our history in a quick um, one hour six, uh, series here. But I wanna continue this. I think this has been a great lecture series. Um, it was the beginning, but I do not want it to see it at the end. So I want to really kind of keep things going. So I'm just going to say thank you to all those who have presented. Uh, I did. Uh, um, I know that Bill started out with the beginning. Uh, we had the Iron Rails presented by Mr. Steve Handy. 
We had Layton City Incorporated by Senator G Jerry Stevenson. We had the presentation of entertainment by uh, former council member Joyce Brown. We had the loss industry presented by Commissioner Bob Stevenson. We've had Verlin Park presented by former council member Sam Trujillo. And then of course we ended with the sugar factory that was presented by Mr. Ted Ellison. This is just a small snippet of our history. And I want to encourage everyone to come forward, give us all the, the information you can, and let's, let's really preserve Layton and really show where we've at so that those in the future can see and learn from it. So again, thank you for attending. My hat's off to everybody who helped present this. Thank you, Annie. Mr. Price, our Parks Director, thank you for doing this. Thanks for putting it on and keep the ball rolling. That's it. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right, and I'd like to say one more thank you to Mayor Gloria Petra. That was fantastic. Thank you for the excellent wrap up. And um, as she mentioned, we are hoping to continue something like this in the future. So stay tuned. And I would just like to thank Ramp for making the filming of this possible. And thank you everyone for coming and everyone for tuning in online. Have a great day, guys.